Gator and the Jags. South Alabama in their whites. Louisiana, they're traveling black uniforms today. And a good crowd on hand for a Saturday afternoon. As they'll go inside, mm. and that's an easy three for Elijah Ormiston. It's Jones, Gator, Ormiston, Howell, and Tabe, the starting five for South Alabama. And Louisiana will go with the roster that they always go with. It's Themis Folks, Joe Charles, Kobe Julian, Kentrell Garnett, and Hosanna Katinge, the starters for Louisiana. And that is Katinge driving on Howell, shot no good, and the rebound pulled down by Elijah Ormiston. Ormiston has played very well. You see basket early, rebound early. He's been the guy that stepped up for the Jags in this winning streak. There he is again. Takes a three-pointer on the way and good. Elijah Ormiston jags up 5-0. Yeah, he is playing at a high level right now, and it's everything. It's rebounding, it's guarding, it's energy, it's making shots, it's finishing at the rim, talking on defense. Number three has been an asset for the team in white. Well, at least in the first minute, the answer is yes. The energy level is just fine for South Alabama. You wonder about those letdowns Absolutely. after such an emotional win over Troy. And that game on Thursday or so today, a better crowd than usual, which is good inside the Mitchell Center. But, you know, anytime Troy comes to town, the folks in Mobile turn out, and they certainly made a difference in that win over the Trojans. Look at nice that dip inside. And the finish by Thomas Howell. Tabe making it happen. We talked about it in the opening. Tabe getting downhill into that lane. And that time, nice little hook pass. Drew two defenders right over his shoulder to Howell for the finish. Jags in the man, guarding the ball out high. Katinge going up against Howell. And a whistle and a foul. And they're going to get Thomas Howell, the ULM, to him a lot today. Had 11 points in the win over Texas State on Thursday. Shot in and out, no good. Talking about how if they don't turn the ball over today, they turned it over too much at Troy. When uh, when the Raging Cages take care of the basketball, they have a chance to win games in conference, and that has been a big focus on this road trip. Turned away with both free throws, so 7 nothing. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Joe Charles there for the rebound for Louisiana. Louisiana got a lot of guys who can catch and shoot, including that guy right there, Kobe Julian. That's just too much space for him. Just, I mean, he looked up and he's like, oh, okay. But I think if you give Kobe Julian about a half an inch, that's too much space. That kid can play. And you see all the respect for Isaiah Gator already. Every team in conference coming to double him when he dribbles down and tries to get onto, onto that left hand from the left, excuse me, right hand to the left side of the floor. Tabe off the mark. Charles with another rebound. 7-3 early on, Mitchell Center in Mobile, Alabama. Louisiana in black, South Alabama in white. Katinge working on Howell again. Oh, yeah. Fadeaway is good. Hosanna Katinge. Young kids out there, you see how he used the bump from Howell to get into his shot, but he got balanced on the fadeaway. Nice little touch shot. Man, Katinge can play. Tabe to Howell, who can take the three. Pulls up short, and Katinge there for the board. That is not Thomas Howell's shot, obviously. He's got four of them so far this year, but doesn't mind pulling the trigger as Themis Folks brings Louisiana to a tie ball game. Now Isaiah Gator double teamed. And you're right, you see that respect for number two in white. Yeah, they're just not going to let him create or score. And if you look who's guarding him, Garnett, one of the most experienced guards in the league. He's second in career three-point shooting, but can also guard as well. Active second in the NCAA is number 22 for Louisiana, but you see him guarding here too. Turbo outside the arc, no good. And after going up 7-0, the Cajuns have tied it up. Now a chance to take the lead as we near the Great first media speed. timeout. Katinge with a crease and the finish. Talk about Garnett. One thing number 22 in black does for his team, he always finds the post feed. He's an excellent assist guy, averaging five a game. He's had a couple double-doubles. You saw that on display there, getting it to the post guy to where only he could catch it and score. Gator working on folks. Shot clock at 10. There's Ormiston. Nice yes. feed inside to Howell. The penetrate and the dish. And Ormiston, when he catches it, he's giving that little shimmy ball fake to the left side of the floor and getting downhill right, not only to score but create. Love the way number three's play in the last couple of games. Big time early here. 
tied at nine. Pat Greenwood, Bart Heisch, and the entire ESPN crew as that one goes out of bounds off of Kobe Julian. Alabama on the offensive end the last couple of games has been there, and we see it early here at the Mitch. Tabe looking for his first points going up against Kobe Julian, thrown hard to the floor. Joel Tabe coming off a 19.7 rebound performance Thursday night against Troy. He was a perfect five for big, big deal because he penetrates and creates so much. There's a matchup problem typically. That's what Richie Riley's offense has become. Five out, find the matchup either with Tabe, with Jones, or with Gator. In the last few games, it's been number 45. Folks, how does oh, yeah. it strip loose? Get to the middle. And how about, how about folks saying, I'm going to take it right back from you? Two on one. It's Katinge. Has it knocked loose by Howell right to Kobe Julian. And the Cajuns will reset. Now there's a whistle and a foul along the baseline. They're going to get Turbo Jones against Troy. Yeah, in Louisiana, you'll, and you'll see here, South Alabama's going to man to man these out unders. Oh, man, that's a bad matchup. Folks misses. Lucky. And here comes South Alabama. Great five. No, uh, one more. He didn't know he was going to have a clear path to the basket. Ormerson gave it up to Turbo. Nobody hurt, though. Still get you a good possession. There's Gator from three. I got Powell five, pushes got it back out to Tabe. Now a scramble for it underneath. You just you don't want to have those lulls like you had opening the game if you're Louisiana to give up a seven to nothing run. But right now you've battled back, settle in, get a couple of stops, make a couple of shots on the offensive end. Michael Thomas in the game for Louisiana. They'll go eight, nine, maybe ten deep. South Alabama has been consistently at seven the last yeah, couple of games. There's Kobe Julian outside the arc. Beautiful shot by Kobe Julian, and the Cajuns back on top, 12-11. Great shot by Julian, but Garnett again with the savvy assist, second of the game for 22. Jones working on Garnett. Ormiston to Tabe. Good scout. Tabe outside to an open Smurf Millinder for three. The Smurf is in the scoring column. Come on out of the village four. Tabe with another creation there, getting deep in the lane and the pitch back out. The South Alabama guards do a great job of lifting and getting where the ball can see them, young kids out there. Great back cut. Charles to Julian. Cut off by Tabe. Turn around <laughs> jumper high off the glass and good. Kobe Julian Yo, only has eight of the Cajuns' 14 points. And <laughs> he never gets in a hurry and so strong and smooth on balance. That time, little teardrop kiss off the window. Tabe cut off by Charles. He'll get it out to Millinder. Shot clock at 10. Millinder, the stutter step, looking for Ormiston. Guarded nicely. Overhand pass to Ormiston, but can't get the finish. Now Thomas in some dangerous territory Great as it's knocked loose defense. by Turbo. Great transition that. defense. Getting Brown back, he was a starter first game of the year, uh, first couple of games of the year before getting injured, and he just brings an inside-out dynamic that is good for Coach Riley's team, but he can guard two or three positions, and that's why they love number 24 in white. 25, excuse me. Air ball from the corner, shot clock at four. Julian, fade away, short, and there's Judah Brown with the rebound. Brown, 6'6", 225, just length. He brings a lot of length to the floor. He does, and an understanding of the offense, where he needs to spot up on this end, you'll see number 25 look to catch and shoot a lot of open three-point jumpers, but the Smurf can get to his spot as well, and that's his game. Smurf Millender has five, Jags on top by two. Isaiah Gator set to check back in at the next timeout, which will be the media timeout. Drive to the basket off the bottom of the basket, and Howell can't find the handle. It'll go off of South Alabama, and Louisiana will control him. It also didn't have a great game on Thursday. Was held scoreless in the first half and only wound up with 13 points in the second. Yeah, and once he gets going, he scores in like five, six, seven point clips. We've seen that a lot across the course of, across the, course of the year, especially in the second half. 
Want to see two get going. Once he sees one go in, though, it's, they typically start coming in bunches. Joey. There is Gator. Yet to score today. He's 0 for 1, missed a three-pointer. But we saw Troy double-team, sometimes triple-team him. And Louisiana doing a lot of the same. They want to know where number two is on the court at all times. And they definitely, they're going to let him drive to the right some, but they don't want him getting over here to the left. Anytime he gets on this left side of the floor coming back right, that's where he's really good offensively. You're going to see a double come. Millender, defender off balance, but the shot is short. And Julian with the rebound for Louisiana. Almost fadeaways, young kids out there. Shoot it up just a little bit. If it's flat, it'll hit front rim. Michael Thomas from downtown, no good. Numbers. There's Judah Brown, who can pull the three, but gives it up to Ormiston. Knocked away by Michael Thomas. Two on four for Louisiana, and they will reset the offense here. It's too far out for that post up. Good job by Howell. Julian guarded by Ormiston. Spin move. Oh, that is a beautiful touch by Kobe Julian, who is already in double figures. He's got 10. Looking like Baskin Robbins giving it to you <laughs> in a lot of flavors. Howell was wide open momentarily. Gator didn't see him. Now it's Brown just inside the three-point line, not close. Really good defense that time by Charles. And you can see why Louisiana leads the conference in contesting the three. Their hands are always there on shooters. There's Ormiston with a nice steal. Loose ball knocked into the hands of Smurf Miller. Back to Ormiston, double team, doesn't matter. Tough. Turn around, Elijah Ormiston, 18-16 Jags. See how he got his foot 180 degrees, young kids, got it all the way around and face up and kept the ball high up so he didn't bring it down amongst the guards. Nice play by Ormiston, nice bucket. He's playing well again. He's leading the Jags in scoring today, Pat. He's got seven. Under nine to go. There's Julian. I believe they're going to get Ow. Howell. Close. And this is where he's been great, too, at the free throw line, scoring a lot of points for his team. He's been to the free throw line 80 times this year already. Turn of this team coming in. Howell battled, battled foul trouble early in the year, and we saw more minutes from Kearing when Brown was out. Now you're expecting number 20 to come back in. That's the one good thing for Coach Richie Riley's team is foul. He's, they are deep, and he goes with different combinations and settle into maybe an eight-man rotation. But see that guy right there, Kearing can come in, can rebound, but South can play through him as a big, and that's one of the things he brings. You'll see him catch it, dribble a couple of times, hand off, and get a roll action. So I like number 20's game, and I definitely like his hair. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah Gator, no good. I sneaked that one in there. Yeah, you did. I, for I was the not, hairless. I was not prepared for one, that one. One for the hairless. <laughs> folks from three. It's good. Themis, folks, puts Louisiana on top, 21-18. Little lazy on the cover there that time by Smurf and can't leave these guys open for a second. First time we've seen game. London Fields in the lineup. Oh, Doesn't matter for Tommy <laughs> as he's able to put two in and make it a one-point game. You remember when you was a little kid and you used to play on the Nerf goal and you oh, dribble, yeah. dribble, dribble and get as close as you could and then you jump up and score it real quick? That's what Tommy reminds me of against those bigs. There were three guys around him, bigger than him, one on four and puts them all in the basket after the nice shot take. I was much better on the Nerf goal. <laughs> I think we all might have been, partner. <laughs> I like this matchup. Tabe working on fields. Now Sw double team. I swing it. To Smurf. One more. There's Gator for three. Isaiah Perfect. Gator for three. Jags back on top, 23-21. Perfect offense. So patient by playing through Tabe. Dribble, 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 dribble. Get the double pitch out. One more, one more. Three points, IG. It's that extra pass. Once you see the double coming, somebody's got to be open. You got to find it quickly. It's that and the spacing, though. You got to space it out and make the defenders cover more ground. Just not enough time for the Cajuns to get there on Gator. There's a good job by Marshall Keering overplaying the pass, knocking it out. Have to work so hard on every offensive possession, i.e., Tabe. Uh, Turbo Jones, who we haven't really seen create a lot today. We will see Zero do that. But it's just a good mix right now. But don't, 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 get, it, don't get it twisted. Two's the guy. How about Kearing with a strip of Katinge? 
Marshall Keering in because exactly. Thomas Howell. Uh, yeah, Thomas Howell got in foul trouble. Keering making his mark. There's yeah. a stop, and there's Turbo Jones, who will go to the free throw line. And that's right. They're all active. What's happened lately is you see Ormiston has been so active, number three, and then so deep, but it is a guard led team that plays through their bigs when needed, is who the Jags are. Tyrell Turbo Jones making them both. And the Jags extend their lead to four under seven here in the first half. Pat, this is where the Jags have been much better in the last three or four games. Man-to-man -man defense in the half court, protecting the rim, great help, and then finishing the possession with a rebound. Folks working on Millender, tough shot, can't get it to go. Keering battling for the rebound, gets it right to Kobe Julian. Julian blocked, battling 20. but gets it back. Battling 20. There's Katinga. He battling 20. Give me one more, 20. Again. Come on, 20. Oh, man. Wow. London Fields finally quiets the crowd, but what an effort defensively by South Alabama. Hey, he didn't get a stop, but number 20 just earned him some more minutes right there, did Kieran. You see what I'm talking about with the energy. Gator, fade away. In and out, no good. There's Fields for the board. Fields working on Millender. And a huge collision. There's going to be a moving screen on Louisiana. Let's take a look at that defensive effort again. Get Whoever get has to do the stats, I feel bad <laughs> for them. Get your hand out, folks, because you're going to get about three or four of them. <laughs> look at the energy. High point. Right here was the play that just kept There's the possession one. going. And now in your mind as a shot blocker, you're like, you know what? I've protected this thing a couple times. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. There's two. And then the ball just There's three. tough bounce out. But you got to like the energy, man, especially from – this shows the culture of what Richie Riley's got right now. Kearing hasn't played in two games. He comes in for his opportunity, and bam, 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 three blocks, two rebounds, playing through and get a basket. Get you a finish, big fella. Uh, Kobe Julian, uh, uh, check that. That was Joe Charles, said, no, not in my house. He rejects Kearing underneath. And now Elijah Ormerson will check back yeah. in at the next whistle. I like the sub. You can see Kearing is a little winded, hasn't played at that game speed in the last few weeks. And so you see Ormerson getting ready to come back in. But good minutes out of 20. Katinge on Kearing. A lot of body contact down there. And Katinge wins the power battle. Turnaround jumper good. He's got eight. Yeah, fatigue basket, experience basket right there for 34. Kearing outside the arc. Nope, no good. Kearing's not a guy that, that it, it, that's not beyond the scope of his show, of his shooting. That was his 20 cell <laughs> on Smurf. But yeah, man, sometimes it's hard when you're wide open, even when you're tired, not to take that shot like Kearing did. But I, I like the minutes by 20, even though the last couple of possessions were not productive. Jags in the man, tied at 25. Campbell. Katinge outside for Garnett. Three-pointer no good, but an offensive board and another chance for Louisiana. Second chance is always important on the road. On the floor, whistle on Ormison as Katinge was 15 to seven, but here's the key. Offensively, seven to one. Seven turnovers as well for Louisiana, and that's been the issue. And so those categories, will they lengthen or will they tighten up? Right now, pretty evenly matched game. Fields. Fouled. He'll go to the I don't know about that one. I mean, I just, I don't see, unless there was a hit on the way up, maybe on the way up on the wrist. Uh, but a lot of times if you're scoring, leading, uh, leading the league in, uh, in that category, you're going to get that call. Both free throws are good, and Julian with 14 of the 27 points for Louisiana. Cajuns leading by two. A little token pressure here by Louisiana. Now they'll try to get a steal in the half court, and they do. Charles has it stripped from behind by Gator. So you make the mistake on one free throw line, 4-2. He is 17 of 22 from the line so far this year. First one in and out, no good. And Charles rebounds per game. Wow, won a state title at Karen Crow High School, just outside of Lafayette. 28-25 Cajuns. 
Charles on the front of this pressure. He is long, quick, and has caused another turnover. How about how about the switch? And how do you guard him? You know, who do you guard him with? A guard, a big? He's just he's an interior matchup problem. I like Tabe on him um, because he's physical enough. But right now it's uh, it's time for the Jags to get a couple of stops. I'd like to see him get out and transition a little bit more. Another second chance opportunity for the Cajuns. There's Katinge. Turn around, no good. And Ormiston able to corral the basketball. Katinge, three of eight from the field. He's been a force Ooh, inside, though. That one. Gator working on Garnett. Now gets it to Tabe. He lost control as he tried to drive left side, not touched by Louisiana. And the South Alabama doesn't turn it over a whole lot, and they've been excellent in conference play at taking care of the basketball. A little unfortunate there. Joe Charles gets it to Michael Thomas. Off the screen from Katinge. Now back to Katinge. Good help defense by Ormiston there on the fake help. Millender wow. can't stop him. Nice floater by Thomas. Yeah, and you see Thomas there, the junior, saying, I've been in college a little longer, freshman. It's good defense, though. It's good finish. Yeah, this pressure right here that, that the Raging Cajuns have put on South Alabama, now you only have 15 seconds to run your offense, and that's one of the reasons that you see the slowdown mentality. Mississippi State University, and he played for a long time, and, but a lot of these defensive strategies that you see come from Coach Z. He's on the come up. Shot clock at 15. Ormiston working on Katinga. That's a foul, man. Can elbow him in the back. <laughs> Gator out to Brown. Shot clock becoming a factor. There's Ormiston. Get you Nobody one. stopped him. Two dribbles, but he's strong enough. He gets low enough, and he's strong enough on the bump to not get knocked out of the lane. Long kids out there. Reach for that square. Number three did it there. Thomas had the basket. Last trip down yeah. the court. This time he gives it up to Kentrell Garnett. Three-pointer, 33-27. In his career, number 22 has made 4.3 out of 10 threes every time he shoots them. You can't, he's, and that's the second one in a row. He's not going to miss many. On one, IG. IG. Pop it up in the air. And IG just, the, the thing with him that I love, the word that, that, that I would describe number two and how he plays is steady, Pat. He never really gets rattled, never gets upset. Um, typically always makes the right play. He's a D2 transfer from Assumption in Worcester, Massachusetts. As folks can't get it to go. Katinge on the third attempt. We'll put it down. And Katinge now has eight Jags. Trying to make quick work of it on the other end, and now pushing and shoving. That'll be rebounding for the Raging Cajuns. Eight to one right now on the glass on the offensive end. Six second chance points, and it's a five point lead. Gator has Katinge matched up on him. Yeah, that's a foul. Now there's a foul. One to one. And that'll send the best. He's a load. He's got good feet, good hands, good patience. But that time, Isaiah Gator is the front end of the one and one that we don't have in high school. Katinge there guarding him and just got into him, a little crossover. Um, you can't use your crossover as much against really good guards out front, but against the bigs, crossover, get low, got the bump, get the two, three-point lead. If you can get a stop here and go in one possession or less, you would love that if you're the Jags. Maybe have a chance for a two-for-one if you get a stop here as well if you're Jags. Thomas has it knocked loose, last touch by Turbo. So, Shane, we're under a minute. Mitchell Center in Mobile, campus of South Alabama. Now a whistle and a foul on Keering. That will send Katinge to the free throw line. Get a quick possession here on the offensive end, but Katinge at the free throw line. Missed both of them his first trip. Makes that one, and he'll get one. Got a rebound here if you're South Alabama. Second of two is good. And now they're in a bucket here. Let's see if there'll be a two for one. Louisiana staying in this one, two, two long pressure with Charles up top. Now Jones only has two Not points and they're both at the free throw line. Still got time. So he's gonna play it out here. Gator working off the screen, trying to get Katinge matched up on him again. 
But Charles rotates over. Nice defensive job by Charles. Gator flings it up there, doesn't hit the rim. So a shot clock violation. He's gotten this five point lead on both ends of the floor is number one. Joe Charles has guarded in this pressure. He that time picked up Gator guarding guards, getting rebounds, getting his hands on loose balls and deflections and need to stop here for South Alabama and get the steal, Turbo. Turbo Jones, Ooh. the steal and nobody touched him. He's in 37-34. For no South foul. Alabama. No fouls here. Play good solid defense. Contest a good shot. Good possession. Running jumper no good by Michael Thomas. And that's conference games are not easy to win, especially on the road. Protect your home court. You'll find yourself in one of those four seeds with a bye come conference tournament time. Jags are six and four this season on their home court. Elijah Ormiston. And the Jags attacking the basket to our right as we start the second half. Mm. Jones only had four points in the first. Dribble penetration, looking for a lane, has it stripped loose, and there's a turnover. Nice steal by Louisiana. Who can come out of the half in these first three minutes and establish the offensive identity, defensive identity? Leads tend to lengthen or shorten right out of halves. Katinge. Off the glass and in. He's got 12. And here's the problem. You have Thomas Howell guarding him, and Howell already has two fouls. You don't want to pick up that third. No doubt that Louisiana coaching staff is going to target him in this early part of the second half of the year. Yeah, he's a finisher and a standstill shooter. Um, doesn't get to the line a lot. He goes up overall. We've seen a lot of schools do the trans and brought them up. And he's had a lot of success, Isaiah Gator being one of them. And I think one of the reasons why COVID year gave an extra year in those Division II guys that might have been on that intermediary level as far as playing D1, you get an extra year to be stronger, be more experienced, learn the game better, and so far it's working. So 39-35, Louisiana. Folks has picked up its dribble. Mm. And they go down to Katinge again, working on Howell. Jump pass, got bailed out by the fact that Garnett was open. Shot clock at five. Garnett on Tabe. Turn around, floater, doesn't hit anything. Gator there for the rebound. The Jags have numbers. Tabe going strong to the basket, misses oh, Orbison one, there three. for the rebound and the putback. Hustle, 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 number three. Young kids out there, game-winning play by Ormiston to outrun the Louisiana defense. He was way behind a couple of guys, outran it. It meant more, got the basket. Nice move here. Yep, Katinge can't get the Fillender and bring and move Tabe to the four. That's what Coach Riley's thinking about now, and he's got to decide pretty quick. Want to get Howell. I go big or small based on what Louisiana's done, and I like this move here to stay big. You got two big guys. You got Tabe at the three. He's trying to find a matchup. I think you'll see Tabe get the ball here and try to find that matchup we've seen now that South Alabama's gone bigger. Four-point Cajun lead. Ormerson flashing, couldn't get it to him. Goes outside to Turbo. Trying yeah, to get Turbe doubles. flashing across. Those, was, those doubles coming timely, Pat. Yep. Apologize, but no, like, no, that's good defense woo. underneath. Yeah, when the ball gets downhill with Gator, Turbo, or in that time it's a single, you don't get the finish. Katinge gets it out to, to uh, Kobe Julian quickly, working on Ormiston. Now an offensive foul on Kobe Julian. He lowered the shoulder, and that was the key. It was the key, um, and you don't see a lot of offensive foul calls, but could have gone either way, but the official was right there on it. Let's see here. Yeah, little push. Ormiston held his position. I see what the official saw. Now, important to note, that's number three yeah. on Kobe Julian. Big time. Foul trouble. And this Louisiana team not nearly as deep as South Alabama, so Julian's got to play very Just about the time that Tabe switched his body around just a little bit and you get the body contact. Yeah, anytime you slap and you, and you slap big over the top, that's a foul instead of a poke from under. If you poke from under, that's not going to be a foul. But over that shoulder, typically the officials are going to give the offense the benefit of the doubt. Outside to Ormiston, Would fakes be a big the three, one. goes left, misses the three. Four point game, just underway second half in Mobile. Pat Greenwood, Bart Heisch, our ESPN crew doing double duty. We had the women 
playing Georgia State earlier today. What a pass. Oh, what a pass inside Joe Charles with the finish. And the Cajuns extend the lead to six. Joe Charles curled around that flex screen there and never stopped young kids, and the passer threw him open on the opposite side of the rim. Tabe, right baseline. Nice pass nice. to Ormiston, and the floater is good. Man, South Alabama has a couple of guys that are really good traffic passers down there after penetration, and I like how Ormiston finds creases, Pat. He always has his hands up, catch, get it up high, nice finish. Body hit the floor. Judah Brown lost his footing. Outside Hard. the folks for three. That's an air ball. Numbers. Turbo pushing the break. Nice pass to Tabe. Strong drive right side, and Tabe makes it a two-point game. Hill with a three-on-two, four-on-three in the middle of that floor. Good things usually happen for the Jags. And you saw that grin from Tabe as yeah. well. He liked that one, didn't he? He loves to go up and hit, get that contact, body control, finish through people, not over, through people is what number 45 likes to do. He's 6'5", 210. He's not Katinge, but he's still a big body underneath. I want to see him play strong safety. There is Katinge. Go get it. Go get it. Who wants it? It'll be South Alabama's Judah Brown coming Here's up again. with it. Tabe. Oh, throw it up. Yeah. Turbo was saying, hey, throw it up. Let's get the alley-oop. But a good defense by Louisiana. Good luck. Charles on the other side. Can't get the three-pointer. And the third to get a double-double. We've got 15-35 left. But it's just how crafty he is with the ball, how patient. He's a great early blockout post player. He gets his body in position, has a great feel for the game. Free throw is good by Kobe Julian, who now has 17 points right at his average. He's at 17.7 per game, the leading scorer in the conference. And I want to see how the Raging Cajuns do with him out of the game. I like the sub by Coach Marlin. He's got three fouls. Get him out of there. Go back to this timely, timely turnovers. Yeah, Jags didn't get it across the timeline in 10 seconds, but Isaiah Gator pulled up just short of the half court line. And, and that's one thing that, that Louisiana has been letting you get across the half court line and then coming at you. That time they switched it around. And South Alabama wasn't prepared for it. It's just like running the zone read in football. It looks the same, but maybe the blocking scheme's different. The attack is different, and uh, that's a great call, partner. Outside, Joe Charles. He's got eight. This team feeds off of energy, off of runs, off of turnovers. Look at the bounce in the team from Louisiana now. Active, running around everywhere. And now once South Alabama breaks the pressure, you only have 14, 15 seconds to run your offense. Gator working one there's on the one. Double. And there's the pass inside to Tabe. Great rotation. Tabe on Katinge outside to Turbo for three. Turbo Jones, no good. He's now 0 for 2 from three-point range. And it's an eight-point Louisiana lead, threatening to stretch it to double digits. Shot no good. Mm. Lucky miss there for the Jags. And Got to find something efficient on this end and then find a way to get a couple of stops. But that's a lazy pass there. And Michael Thomas can't make him pay. Uh over in the second half, scoring. Katinge outside the arc. Better coverage. And zero road trip from last year. Trying to go three and one this year. Um, but that's when this run started for Louisiana as they stay in this one, two, two pressure and it's not token anymore. They're looking to get turnovers. Jags break the pressure and now set it up. Still have 20 on the shot clock. Gator. 
outside to Turbo. Working off the screen. Turbo looking for some space. Help of the raging Cajuns as you see the frustration from Coach Richie Riley. But I'm telling you, it's because of the coverages when South Alabama's guys, the guards like to spin in the lane. If there's a spin or a head turn, those Louisiana defenders are coming and it's caused havoc on the offensive end for the Jacks. Kobe Julian back in the ball game. He's got three fouls, guarded by Turbo. Patience, man. Shoot it anyway, wow. and he's got such a great touch. Julian now with 19, 53-46. And it's been a quiet 19, Pat, but his hands are so soft. Just gets it up on the rim with that great touch, and there's my guy. Ormiston from three. He buys the Ormiston. 14 for him today. It's his first three-pointer. 53-49, under 12 in Mobile. Jags making a run. Three of their last three. Katinga on no Howell. Foul. Don't get that fourth right here. No help coming. That's just too deep. Yeah. And you can't do anything when it's bad. You got to bring some help there if he's that deep. Hosanna Katinga with 14. Ormiston passed it up. Smurf will not. Three pointer, no good. When Smurf misses his three point shots, they come out flat, Pat. Flat. Yep. Pat. <laughs> There's that. There is that. Thomas. Great look. Outside to Charles. Yeah. Three pointer is good. Joe Charles with 13. Young kids out there, if you watch number 22, Kentrell Garnett, the little plays he makes, the little passes to get it into shooting, shooter's shooting pocket. It's always right where it needs to be, and that's why a lot of these shots go in for these Louisiana shooters is because Garnett is always putting it in the right spot. This is this is danger time right here with him getting downhill. Yeah. Off the class and in, that's Kobe Julian. Largest lead now is 11. 60 to 49, Louisiana. That's 20 points. It's been really good the last three games. Inserted into that starting lineup. He's a, he's a matchup issue because of his length, and he can play on the perimeter. Allows Coach Richie Riley to play that five-out motion that he likes to play and pitch to shooters with guards getting downhill. But, you know, Ormiston's been good on this defensive end as well, causing a turnover. His previous high was 12 against Mercer. He's got 20, looking for 22. Hey. Nice job to get it to Isaiah Gator, 60-54. to 54. Yeah, and look at Margrave in the game here as well for South Alabama. We have seen Julian play some big minutes for this team. Need him here. Short. Way short on the three-pointer. Block out by Ormiston. With the rebound. Doesn't have the numbers, two on three, so he'll pull it back out. Gator, an open three-pointer. No. Off the front of the iron. Isaiah doesn't miss many of those. I think he was a little surprised. He was so wide I open. I think you're right. Waiting for somebody to close out. Nobody did. But you see Margrave and Ormiston very similar. Yeah, that could have gone probably either way, but one of the substitution things that I'm noticing here for Coach Richie Riley is he's likes to play small all year. You can't do that against Louisiana with these rebounding problems. That's why you're seeing these bigs in the game that creates a guard on a big matchup. Julian takes advantage. Kobe Julian, 24 points. Stuff. But playing with foul trouble too and being able to be a scorer um, it's something that's learned it's not given Tabe left side need a cutter here Jags down by nine Ooh. Jags down by seven Tabe with the floater he said he said bar what you talking about I don't need no <laughs> cutter man I'm going straight to this basket He's dynamic down there, man. Very strong. Don't get a foul. Don't get a foul. Good. Good defense there. High hands. But the guy that never misses actually misses. All right. Get this thing down to about five in this under eight timeout. There is Gator on the break. And the Jags aren't dead yet. 63-58, Isaiah Gator. The ability to string stops together, but we've noticed in the second half, South Alabama is really good in transition. They've taken advantage of some opportunities. That might have been an illegal. Narrow the gap even further. 
And you see the experienced point guard, Garnet, Garnett of uh, Louisiana. He's one for four today, typically shoots 43%. And so South Alabama has dodged a couple of bullets with number 22 missing open looks from the corner. Gator working on Garnett. One more. Yep. And there's Tabe driving on oh. fields. Mm. He has it blocked Good by help. Joe Charles. Yeah, he drew four guys that time. Might have had a pitch. And here goes. Pulls the defender up, you don't see that get called much, then gets the bump, gets the finish. Veteran play by number 22 on the road. His first trip to the free throw line today is successful. So it's 66-60, the Cajuns. Use the tricks if you got them. That's right. They get the numbers. Howell, a lot oh, of body bad. contact, nothing there, but Tabe there for the follow. Nice follow. Okay, now we got a little, looked like we were going to have some pressure, but I like how Howell just slowed the tempo down of Louisiana. Louisiana, when they have not turned it over, it's been good. For South Alabama, when they finish the possession with the rebound, it's been good. Keep an eye on those two things. Katinge working on good Howell. Good job by Howell there. They'll get it back to Katinge. To him. He just makes a play, gets up in the air, keeps the ball high. Little bump. And, and I would say, uh, yeah, I would say there's been a lot of, lot of more obvious contact that hasn't been called. That's little L I L apostrophe. That's little bump. That's what that was. <laughs> oh, How about my. the steal by Charles? Great defense, careless by South Alabama offensively. 13th turnover, and it's back to a nine-point lead for Louisiana. A couple of steals. Well, so one and one for Isaiah Gator. Cajuns also in the bonus on the next foul. Very well this year, that shoot free throws. Yeah, close to the top of the league in efficiency from the free throw line is South Alabama, and that's been a mainstay of Coach Richie Riley's team. The ability to shoot free throws, number two in the league in free throw shooting, but it's about getting stops and finishing plays with rebounds now. There's six minutes to go. You got to get two stops for every score for Louisiana down the stretch for the Jags. Folks to Katinge. Outside, pass, Charles man. for three. Yeah. Got it. Joe Charles makes it a 10 point game. He's got 18 points. The vision of Katinge in the post when the double comes from wherever has been really efficient today for the Cajuns. Tabe, a tough shot. Katinge able to get the defensive board. Important. Go ahead, partner. They haven't let Tabe have an easy shot today, have they? No, and they're longer in rebounds. Louisiana over South Alabama. This, this is a big out under here, 19 on the shot clock. Jags hopefully get a turnover, get a deflection, get out and run. I'd like to see the tempo pick up if you're the team in white. There's typically going to be a foul if there's a push toward the out of bounds. But Charles here at the line, um, he's three or four today and has made some time. Joe Charles, the junior, makes for Louisiana, have added up in this game, and he's been a reason for this 11-point lead. And you talk about what he's done offensively, but he's second in the Sun Belt Conference when it comes to rebounding at 9.4 a game. He's got eight rebounds so far today, so two away from a double-double. Katinge already in that double-double range. He's got 17 and 10. Ormond's off, protect this 10-point lead. Now for the Jags, gonna force the tempo, force the pressure. There's a steal. And Turbo, that's beautiful. Athletic move by Turbo Jones. Wow, man, out of a timeout. How big is that? Get a quick one, get it under 10, get one more stop, get it to a two possession game.
Can't leave him. Outside Garnett. No. Got it for three. Second active leading three-point percentage shooter in the country. Big one for 22. Good find. Howell for three. He's got the answer on the other end. Thomas Howell. We're back to eight. I love the answer, but you got to keep from having to do it at this point in the game. Close to four minutes left. Eight-point lead stops are going to matter every trip. There's Folks, one. yep, left his feet early. Didn't know where he was going with the ball, and Isaiah Gator is right there. Chance to cut it to six, maybe five. Ormiston, right baseline. There's Gator. Pull up jumper. Good. Isaiah Gator. He's got 23. And man, he knows his spot. When he gets that one dribble going left, young kids out there, the in between game still matters. Thanks, IG. Man, and Isaiah Gator's played really good defense today, too. He's made these Louisiana guards work for everything they get, they're getting. Oh, nice cut. Joe Charles off the feed from Katinge. And it's 81-73. Katinge drew that double team, and that's what allowed Charles the open pass underneath. Yeah, of all the teams we've seen so far here at, at, at Mitchell, at the Mitchell Center, I, these two bigs for Louisiana, Charles and Katinge, have been as impressive as any team in the league to me. They're fighting over rebounds. Yeah, Tabe couldn't get it to go. And we're under three. Still have a media timeout to go. But Louisiana is going to do everything they can to milk the clock here with an eight-point lead. And the problem you got if you're South Alabama, when you start fouling, who are you going to foul? Yeah, All these true. guys shoot the ball pretty well from the stride. Arkansas State, Texas State, ULM. South and Georgia State all coming to the Cajun Dome with one more in that MAC title game before they hit the road. I want to go to the Cajun Dome. Cajun Dome's a nice place. I might like to have been at the Cajun Dome on this on this road trip. They've been for <laughs> some of that Mardi Gras. It is that time along yes, the Gulf is. Coast. Ooh, zone look, 1-3-1 one, one look. First time we've seen matters, the strategery, if you will, <laughs> of the game. And, but right now, if you're South Alabama, this is exactly how you want to cut into the throw shooter. And he missed that one badly, too. It wasn't, wasn't just one of those goes off the rim. Yeah, that's one my, uh, my my grandma used to say, say, Coach, you shot that one cockeyed. <laughs> Never got it online. But he made the second one, and yep. now you see some pressure from South Alabama. Might be trouble here. I get it too. Sometimes the percentages can mess with you. Let's see if uh, 22 steps up and makes these big, timely free throws here with less than two and a half. 15 of 21 on the year. And two of. Makes them both. Three of three today. Yeah, he's a guy I'm not going to foul at the end, regardless of the uh, of the percentages. And I don't think that was an intentional foul there either by Howell. No. I think he was just trying to control his body off the press. In, in, in between play, trying to get a steal. Right. But this 1-3-1 one, one defense, the confidence in your team to go play something down the stretch on the road that you haven't played all day shows the experience of this team. But there's Ormiston. Got to find him. It's 83-77. Still time for the Jags. They're down six. You need two stops in a row and get this thing down one possession game with a chance to get back and tie it. We'll get it to one. Good timing there on the roll. Katinge misses and a big chance for South. Here comes Gator. One on. Got clipped and I think he landed on that elbow. Yeah. Maybe. Man, these times in the middle of the night, I'll still roll over. Elbow. The toughness to be able to step up and knock down the shot. May, may have tweaked the shoulder a little bit, too. Couldn't really see the fall, but he's a tough kid, man. We've seen that all year. And at it, this point, they need you on the free throw line, and he delivers. But you want to be on the free throw line. If you're that guy at the end of games at home in conference play, three and three, playing a rival, hadn't beat them, they beat you three times in a row, somebody's got to step up. And Kobe We're, Julian is back in for Louisiana. He's got four. Turbo. Look at the defense by Turbo Jones. Passing out, one's eight. Yeah, I expect this Louisiana team to continuously hover around the top five. I told you I like the Georgia State team. USM brings the dynamic of that jump defense that Jay Ladner plays. You don't see it a lot. They can beat anybody any night. Very competitive league is the Sun Belt. 
Right at a minute. Gator. Good layup. To Ormiston. To Smurf. Three pointer from the corner. Has to go. It doesn't, oh. but offensive board. 50 ball. One more. Gator beyond the free throw line. No good. And that might do it. Yeah, you got to foul here. Can't be wasting time. Got to go ahead and get him. Got to go ahead and get him. Got to go ahead and get him. Folks, gets it across the time. Possession game and not a two possession game. If it's a six point lead right there, you can play it out with 45. But seven, that's a little bit different. You got to. Get some more offense as Tabe will check out with 11. Folks, has five points. Has six points now. Check that, make it seven. And it's 88 79. Jags down three possessions. Millender, no good. Charles with the rebound. And the Jags may wave the white flag here. Louisiana, this is a big win for the Cajuns. It is Julian, 24 points, eight rebounds. Charles, 22 points, eight rebounds. And we know what Katinge did with all of his rebounds, 14 and 10 at that double-double. But these guys.